So let's go next to the routers. A router is a device that forwards data packets between computer networks, thus creating an overlay internetwork. A router is connected to two or more data lines from different networks. When a data packet comes in one of the lines, the router reads the address information in the packet to determine its ultimate destination. Then, using information in its routing table or routing policy, it directs the packet to the next network on its journey. Routers perform the traffic directing functions on the Internet. A data packet is typically forwarded from one router to another through the networks that constitute the Internet network until it reaches its destination node. The most familiar type of routers are home or small office routers that simply pass data, such as web pages and email, between the home computers and owner's cable or DSL modem, which connects to the Internet through the Internet Service Provider or ISP. More sophisticated routers, such as enterprise routers, connect large business or ISP or Internet Service Provider networks up to the powerful core routers that forward data at high speed along the optical fiber lines of the Internet backbone. Do routers are typically dedicated hardware devices of the software-based routers has grown increasingly common. Here you can see on your screen the three most popular vendors routers. So one, the left one, is the Alcatel Lucent 7750 router which is a very powerful router another one the upper one of the right side is a Cisco Cisco 72000 series little bit weak router it's another one is a bottom one which is which stands in bottom right it's a Huawei, it's a Chinese company. Huawei CX600 series router, X3. It's very powerful compared to other vendors' same class routers. Let's go on. When multiple routers are used in interconnected networks, the routers exchange information about destination addresses using a dynamic routing protocol. Each router builds up a table listing the preferred routes between any two systems on the interconnected networks. A router has interfaces for different physical types of network connections, such as copper cables, fiber optic or wireless transmission. It also contains firmware for different networking communication protocol standards. Each network interface uses the specialized computer software to enable data packets to be forwarded from one protocol transmission system to another. Routers may also be used to connect two or more logical groups of computer devices known as subnets. 
each with a different subnetwork address. The subnet addresses recorded in the router do not necessarily map directly to the physical interface connections. A router has two stages of operation called planes, control plane and a forwarding plane. A router records the routing table listing what route should be used to forward the data packet and through which physical interface connections. It does this using internal pre-configured addresses called static routes. Forwarding plane. The router forwards the data packets between incoming and outgoing interface connections. It routes to it, it routes it to the correct network type using information that the packet header contains. It uses data recorded in the routing table control plane. Routers may provide connectivity within enterprises between enterprises and the internet and between internet service providers networks. The largest routers such as Cisco or Juniper or Huawei or it doesn't matter interconnect the various ISPs or internet service providers or may be used in large enterprise networks. Small routers usually provide connectivity for typical home and office networks. Other networking solutions may be provided by a backbone wireless distribution system WDS which avoids the cost of introduced net into introducing networking cables into buildings. All sizes of routers may be found inside enterprises. The most powerful routers are usually found in internet service providers, academic and research facilities. Large business may also need more powerful routers in to cope with ever increasing demands of intranet data traffic. A three layer model is in common use, not all of which need be present in smaller networks. Access routers, including small home office models, are located at customer sites such as branch offices that do not need hierarchical routing of their own. Typically, they are optimized for low cost. Some of them are capable of running alternative free Linux-based firmwares like Tomato, OpenWRT or DDWRT. Distribution routers aggregate traffic from multiple access routers either at the same site or to collect the data streams from multiple sites to a major enterprise location. Distribution routers are often responsible for enforcing quality of service across a WAN or wide area network, so they may have considerable memory installed. Multiple uh, wide area network interface connections and substantial onboard data processing routings. They may also provide connectivity to groups of the several of the file servers or other external networks. External networks must be carefully considered as part of overall security strategy. Separate from the router may be a firewall or a VPN virtual private network handling device or the router may include this and other security functions. 
Many companies produce security-oriented routers, including Cisco Systems, PIX, and ISA 5500 series, Juniper's NAT screen, WatchGuard's Firebox, Barracuda's variety of mail-oriented devices, and many others. In enterprise, a core router may provide a collapsed backbone interconnecting the distribution tire routers from multiple buildings of a campus or large enterprise locations. They tend to be optimized for high bandwidth but lack some of the features of edge routers. Routers intended for Internet Service Provider or ISP and major enterprise connectivity usually exchange routing information using the Border Gateway Protocol or BGP. RFC 4098 standard defines the types of BGP protocol routers according to the router's functions. They could be edge router, also called the provider edge router, is placed at the edge of the ISP network. The router uses external BGP or simply eBGP protocol routers in other service providers or a large enterprise autonomous system. Another type is a, subscri a subscriber edge router, also called the customer edge router, is located at the edge of the subscriber's network. It also uses eBGP protocol to its provider's autonomous system. It is typically used in an enterprise organization. Another type is an inter-provider border router. Interconnecting ISPs is a BGP protocol router that maintains BGP sessions with other BGP protocol routers in ISP autonomous systems. Core in... Okay core router. A core router resides within an autonomous system as a backbone to carry traffic between edge routers. Within an ISP, in the ISP autonomous system, a router uses an internal BGP protocol to communicate with other ISP edge routers other intranet core routers or other ISP intranet provider border routers. Internet backbone type. The internet no longer has a clearly identifiable backbone unlike its predecessor networks. The major ISP systems routers make up what could be considered to be a current internet backbone core. Internet service providers operate all four types of BGP protocol routers described here. An ISP core router is used to interconnect its edge and border routers. Core routers may also have specialized functions in a virtual private network based on a combination of BGP and multi protocol label switching protocols, which stands for, which is MPLS. It is widely used in worldwide networks, which is routing not by a routing table, but it's switching the it's setting uh, labels on each packet and sends to the interface routers again port forwarding routers are also used for 
port forwarding between private internet connected servers voice data fax video processing routers these routers commonly referred to as access servers or gateways there these devices are used to route and process voice voice data video and fax traffic on the internet since 2005 most long distance calls phone calls have been processed as ip traffic or voip or which stands for voice over ip voice over internet protocol voice traffic that the traditional cable networks once carried use of access server type routers expanded with the advent of the internet first with dial-up access and other resurgence with voice phone service the very first device that had fundamentally the same functionality as the router does today was the interface message processor IMP IMPs were the devices that made up the ARPANET the first packet network the idea for the router called the gateways at that time initially came about through an international group of computer networking researchers called the International Network Working Group or INWG set up in 1972 as an informal group to consider the technical issues involved in connecting different networks later that year it became a subcommittee of the international federation uh, for information processing these devices were different from most previous packet networks in two ways first they connected the similar kinds of networks such as serial lines and local area networks second they were connectionless devices which had no role in assuring the traffic was delivered reliably leaving that entirely to the hosts this particular idea had been previously pioneered by the Cyclades network the idea was explored in more detail with the intention to produce a prototype system as part of two contemporary programs one was the initial DARPA initi initiated program which created the TCP IP architecture in use today you know yeah you remember that TCP stands for transmission control protocol and IP for internet protocol the other was a program at Xerox PR PARC or PARC to explore new networking technologies which produced the PARC universal packet system due to corporate intellectual property concerns it received a little attention outside Xerox for years sometime after early 1974 the first Xerox routers became operational the first true IP router was developed by Virginia Strasserer by BBN 
as part of DARPA initiated effort during 1975 to 1976. By the end of the 1976, three PDP-11 based routers were in the service in the experimental prototype Internet. The first multi protocol routers were independently created by staff researchers at MIT, which is Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Stanford in 1981. The Stanford routers was done by William Yeager and the MIT one by Noel Chiappa. Both were also based on PDP 11s. Virtually, all networking now uses TCP IP, but multi protocol routers are still manufactured. They were important in the early stages of the growth of computer networking, when protocols other than TCP IP were in use. Modern internet routers that handle both IP version 4 and IP version 6 are multi protocol but are simpler devices than routers processing Apple Talk, DACnet, IP, and Xerox protocols. From the mid 1970s and in the 1980s, general purpose of mini computers served as a routers. Modern high-speed routers are highly specialized computers with extra hardware added to speed both common routing functions such as packet forwarding and specialized functions such as IPsec encryption. There are substantial use of Linux and Unix software based machines running open source routing code for research and other applications. Cisco's, which is the most popular company producing the routers and network equipment, Cisco's operating system was independently designed measure designed. Measure router operating systems such as those from Juniper Networks and Extreme Networks are extensively modified versions of Unix softwares. For pure internet protocol forwarding function, a router is designed to minimize the state information associated with individual packets. The main purpose of a router is to connect multiple networks and forward packets destined either for its own network or other networks. A router considered a layer 3 device because its primarily forwarding decision is based on the information in the layer 3 IP packet specifically the destination IP address. This process is known as routing. When each router receives a packet, it searches its routing table to find the best match between the destination IP address of the packet and one of the network address in the routing table. Once a match is found, the packet is encapsulated in the layer 2 data link frame for that outgoing interface. You remember that? That sending side encapsulating the packet and the receiving side de-encapsulating the packet. Thus the encapsulation and data flow process happens. A router does not look into the actual data contents that the packet carries, but only at the layer 3 addresses to make a forwarding decision. 
plus optionally other information in the header for hints on for example QOS QOS stands for quality of service it has a significant role in modern networking because QoS quality of service has a different costs different qualities gives different qualities for different services for example if <clears throat> in one tube sorry in one tube you have both downloading and FTP downloading and uh, voice over IP call and uh, tube is very limited tube bandwidth is very limited you need to give the higher cost of the voice over IP because you need if any packets lost or if any packets um, the uh, reach to the destination of FTP packet downloading FTP file downloading you'll maybe you'll not be able to determine it but if some packets lost during voice over IP conversation the voice the conversation will interrupt that's why the cost is very important and playing a significant role now once the packet is forwarded the router does not retain any historical information about the packet but the forwarding action can be collected into the statistical data if so configured forwarding decisions can involve decisions at layers other than layer 3 a function that forwards based on layer 2 information is properly called a bridge this function is referred to as layer 2 bridging as the addresses it used the forward the traffic are layer 2 addresses for MAC addresses medium access control addresses on Ethernet besides making decision on which interface a packet is forwarded to which is handled primarily via, via the routing table a router also has to manage congestion when packets arrive at the rate higher than the router can process three policies commonly used in the internet are tail drop random early decision is red red and weighted random early decision w red tail drop is the simplest and most easily implemented the router simply drops packets once the length of the queue exceeds the size of the buffer in the router red probabilistically drops datagrams early when the queue exceeds a pre-configured portion of the buffer until a predetermined maximum when it becomes tail drop w red requires a weight on an average queue size to act upon when the traffic is about to exceed the pre-configured size so that short bursts will not trigger random drops another function of routers performs is to decide which packet should be processed first when multiple queues exist it it was my example which i brought to you this is managed through qos or quality of service which is critical when voice over ip is deployed so that delays between packets do not exceed 150 milliseconds to maintain the quality of voice conversation can you image, imagine 150 milliseconds it is approximately one seventh of one second yet 
another function of a router performs is called policy based routing where special rules are constructed to override the rules derived from the routing table when a packet forwarding decision is made. These functions may be performed through the same internal pass that the packet travel inside the router. Some of the functions may be performed through an application specific integrated circuit or ASIC, A -S -I -C, to avoid overhead causing multiple CPU cycles and other may have to be performed through the CPU as these packets need special attention that cannot be handled by an ISIC. This was the router description, router discussion. So I hope you understand the role of the routers.